Uh, the second lecture is presented by Professor Hirabayashi Yukiko from the Department of Civil Engineering. So, Professor Hirabayashi, please proceed. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Yukiko Hirabayashi. So that today I will talk about how will global warming change water, how will it affect us. So IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the publishing uh, several reports regarding to climate change based on latest research published in past five or six years. And uh, they publish three special reports between 2018 and 2019. And uh, I joined this activity as a lead author of chapter two on and summary for policymaker on ocean cryosphere. And uh, now IPC is publishing the latest assessment report, six assessment report this year and next year. And they recently published the first volume of paper report and I'm also the joining as a lead author of the second volume of this paper in the chapter for water and summary and policymaker. Because of their uh, great uh, contribution for the to understand our climate, they won Nobel Prize in Peace for their activity of the first assessment report 2007. And this year, Professor Shukuro Manabe, uh, who is uh, develop, who developed the first uh, climate model and his research on understanding global warming effect, uh, so the, he won Nobel Prize in Physics in 2021. When I was a master student, I had a chance to attend his lecture in Japan, and I was really excited to see this news. As I said, IPCC report has uh, published the first volume of their report, uh, Physical Science Basis, this August. And this report, they said it is an established fact that human influence has warmed the climate system and that widespread and rapid climate change have occurred. Actually, in the previous report published in 2013, they said temperature is rising, that is virtually certain, more than 99%, but the percentage of the anthropogenic human-induced uh, climate change was 95% at that time. But six uh, years later, they found that confidence should be raised to 100%. So by combining these two, they said it is established fact that the human-induced climate change warm our temperature. And in this report, they mentioned that 1 point or 2 degree warming, 1.5 or 2 degree above pre-industrial level will be exceeded by this century if we do not uh, mitigate GHG, greenhouse gas emission. And also they said human influence on climate change is already contributing our climate, including drought and heavy precipitation. So about the past change in water, uh, here is a figure obtained from the latest IPCC report. And this is a simple presentation of our planet, continent. And this is North America and South America, or Europe, Africa, Asia, and Australasia. And here, the they put yellow color if past drought was affected by human-induced climate change, and if that it was decreased, it, they put green color. And the white or gray color is the insufficient evidence or no significant change. You can see the several places, including Mediterranean or South Africa, human influence has already increased the frequency of drought. This is the same figure, but for heavy precipitation. Compared to previous slide, you can see much more places are showing colors so that it says that uh, we have more evidence that human-induced climate change mainly increase frequency of heavy precipitation. So and another interesting point is, yeah, please remember the place where we put yellow color here and here. So there are several places where both drought and heavy precipitation increase in the same location 
including East Asia, including Japan. So in these regions, the effect of human-induced climate change will impact our life during uh, the change via the change of water. So uh, this kind of uh, figure is created by large ensemble climate experiment named event attribution experiment. And we use climate model and supercomputer to calculate such signals using a climate model named atmospheric ocean general circulation model. So it produced the Earth's climate by taking into account changes in the atmosphere, ocean, land, snow, and ice. But because of the chaos of the nature and atmosphere, even we run the same model using the same condition, the result varies like this if we slightly change initial condition. But if we reproduce the past climate, we give boundary condition to the model and yeah, something like sea surface temperature and sea ice distribution. Of course, the, if we change the initial condition, the uh, result varies, but still we can obtain similar time series features among ensembles. For example, this variable is relatively higher than normal condition in El Nino year and lower in La Nina year. So we replicate past climate using this tool. And to see the impact of human-induced climate change, we run the same model, but using different boundary condition by removing anthropogenic effects trend from such boundary condition. So then we run the model and see how these features are changes from the replicated past. So the difference between previous experiment and this experiment, we can get the impact of human-induced climate change on these variables. So the event attribution experiment, we run 100 times climate ensemble experiment using this model and supercomputer. And we compare two types of experiment, past simulation with and without the anthropogenic global warming. And this is just the example. Flood occurrence probability is the, the probability of the past of the flooding with the historical experiment and the natural experiment, the experiment without human-induced climate change, is compared. And the, this is the impact that the floods has increased or decreased due to past human-induced climate change. So this is just a typical example of event attribution on heavy precipitation. Meteorological Research Institute in Japan estimated that about 7% increase in heavy precipitation was calculated by their model. The, this yeah, heavy precipitation was the disastrous flood in Western Japan in 2018. So we did this event attribution for the past flooding, river flooding, in the 22 large rivers in the world. And we found that about 60% yeah, of events were had affected by anthropogenic climate change. So the blue color is the place where the past real flood has enhanced. The probability was increased because of human-induced climate change. And some regions are showing the decrease of occurrence of flooding because of the humongous climate change. For example, in this basin, the precipitation has increased or slightly increased at the almost the same, but snow-induced flood has decreased because of the past warm, warming climate by humongous climate change. So I talked about how water changes in the past. And uh, next I will talk about future changes in water. So again, I derived this figure from the latest IPCC report. Left hand side is changes in dry days under four degree warming. So if the color is warm, the dry days increase. 
So dry days in increase will increase in arid and semi-arid regions, including Mediterranean, Africa, and Asia. Right-hand side is increase of heavy precipitation under 4 degree warming. So blue color is the place where heavy precipitation will increase. So you can see most of the region in the world, we will expect heavy precipitation will increase. So the increase of dry days will impact on agriculture and ecosystems, and heavy precipitation will increase disasters. So uh, this is our result uh, published this year. So yeah, we calculated whether flood will increase or decrease under future climate. So blue color is the place where flood will increase and red color is the place flood will decrease. So using the latest climate change simulation, the, we found flood is projected to increase in many regions in South Asia, Southeast Asia, Northeast Eurasia, and low latitude Africa and South America. And the bottom is the a model agreement. We run this simulation using several different climate models and show the agreement among models. So how about the impact? This is number of people affected by flooding using this latest simulation. So of course the various changes depending on the climate scenario we selected, but the annual global flood exposure, the number of people affected by flooding will increase about 1.4 fold from historical period with three degree warming. So many people will be affected by increase of flooding. Another aspect of the impact is sea level rise. Uh, this is the diagram obtained from a uh, projected sea level rise uh, derived from special report on ocean and cryosphere. So in this end of century, if we select the highest emission scenario, our sea will, uh, in average, the rise about 84 centimeter. And if we select the lower emission scenario, the number become uh, about half. But the interesting point is if we, our, we fail to reduce the greenhouse gas emission and the temperature rise continues, the sea level rise continues longer time. So in 2300, the possible the sea level rise is more than 3.5 meter. So it means that, yeah, next 100 years, the effect may be not so big, uh, except for small islands. But islands in Japan will lose our land. And also the this kind of mean average sea level rise will increase coastal inundation. So what should be done? What is the countermeasure against climate change? So to think about this, the, of course, reducing greenhouse gas mitigation is important to lower the effect. But still, the, we cannot stop greenhouse gas emission. Therefore, from now to future, there is some impact. So we need to adapt this impact. Therefore, the together with mitigation, adaptation is also important. And uh, we, our group is doing a research project to calculate the cost of adaptation in many sectors. Anyway, so let's start about the mitigation at first. So again, this is the figure from the latest IPCC report. And it said that unless we make strong progress in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the coming decade, warming level will exceed 1.5 degree or even two degree at the end of this century. So this figure shows cumulative CO2 emission and this is the relation of the temperature rise. So we can see it is a very nice relation between cumulative CO2 concentration and temperature rise. So here is the point. If we select or lower the warming up to 1.5 degree, it is yeah, around this value. But we have already here. So 
that it means that if 1.5 degree target, 80% of the total emissions that can be emitted have already been emitted. So we do not have much time to reach this target. And about the adaptation cost, our group calculated adaptation cost to reduce flood damage at global scale. The values varies between the different scenario. Anyway, so if we invest to adaptation about 70 billion US dollar per year, the, we can reduce the damage more than 10 times more, 740 billion US dollar per year. So the adaptation is really effective to reduce the bad impact of climate change. Another important message derived from this uh, work is we showed there are several regions that will in experience increase in flood damage even we adapt to that changes. So uh, the a high flood damage increase, the something like exceeding 0.1% of local GDP remains, especially in eastern China, northern India, and Central Africa, even with adaptation. So the this the number is yeah, derived because of the yeah, cost of the adaptation is too much high compared to the local the benefit for to reduce the damage or the damage uh, occurred during the construction period. Therefore, shorter periods or lower adaptation cost as well as enhanced financial support of high-risk region will effectively reduce such damages. Another aspect, uh, adaptation cost in coastal flooding. We calculated the US dollar in 2013 of the economic damage of inundation, coastal inundation is up to 482 billion US dollar. But the, we think uh, we, when we calculate adaptation cost, it's much lower compared to this total damage. Yeah, about the, yeah, it varies about 43 to 203 billion US dollar. So it is lower than the damage. So we think that the adaptation is also effective for the coastal inundation as well. Okay, so the, that is the key message or les lessons learned from today's lecture in Asia, including Japan, the direct impact of increased river flooding, heavy precipitation or coastal inundation, as well as the impact of drought in grain supply countries. I, I did not yeah, explain today, but the, such as China and Australia is a concern. In order to cope with the diverse water risks that are expected to become more serious in the future, we need to understand the water cycle system comprehensively, predict the future of each region scientifically, and plan and implement medium and long-term adaptation plans that include hard and soft measures. The impact of floods and droughts are more acute in developing countries with low flood defenses and vulnerable agriculture that relies on rainwater. Appro appropriate support for adaptation measures in those countries is necessary to reduce the global damages. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much.